Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Run Yogi Diaries. This is your host, Santosh Shiva. Every week, I bring you conversations with people who are on a journey of well-being and fitness through endurance sports. Hope you take away some tips and perhaps some inspiration to perspire. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to it. Hit like if you like this video and leave your thoughts on whether you took something away or not. In today's show, we have the opportunity to speak with someone who is creating a niche for herself in the 24-hour ultra running format. From a modest beginning in recreational running, she has been scaling her endurance and performance and more recently qualified to represent India for the IAU 24-hour World Championships later this year. We explore what got her started into long-distance running, what's behind her choice of quitting her career and pivoting into a new direction in life? How does she make decisions about pushing limits and the next races? Her foray into trail running and ultra running? Importance of family for pursuing something as big as ultra running? And finally, her recent pivot into the 24 hour format. Let's welcome Ashwini Bhatt. Hi Ashwini, welcome to Run Yogi Diaries. Hi Santosh, really nice to uh, finally be on the podcast after about one month of going about when to be schedule it. So excited to talk to you. Absolutely, uh, you're a busy person. You're almost a celebrity now, so I'm I'm glad that we found time. Oh well, no, 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 no. I don't want to really hear any of those terms. I'm just a runner who's interested in finding the limits. So that's about it. Yeah. But that's with the schedule, yeah, with the schedule and uh, training and all that, so it got a little busy. And also, I think after the uh, Bangalore Stadium run, which happened in January. I had a few travels which were uh, delayed for some time because my training was ongoing and I had a uh, event coming up. So, yeah. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. I was just kidding. And I you know runners, uh, even if you met Eluit Kipchoge on the street, I don't think he's going to pretend he's a celebrity. Uh, that's what runners do, you know. Uh, so I, I was just joking. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, but hey, thanks for joining this uh, podcast. Uh, at the outset, congratulations for qualifying for the World Championship that's coming up. So very excited, and you're the fir- you know the only person from Karnataka I heard, and um, that's yeah. quite exciting. Uh, I grew up in Bangalore, so Karnataka is dear. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, as of now, uh, I'm the only one who's met. The- qualification criteria so that's how I would like to put it because there's not been a selection which has happened because there's still uncertainty about the world championship happening so we still have another stadium run uh, scheduled to happen in Bangalore in June um, so we might I'm I'm hopeful that uh, we will have more good performances coming and we will have at least somebody from Karnataka as well accompanying so let's yeah, see fingers absolutely. crossed Okay, so before we start, uh, I'll let you do a personal introduction and then we'll jump in. Sure. So I'm Ashwini Bhatt. I'm from Bangalore. I was uh, born and brought up in Bangalore, but I am from the Malnad region um, of Sagar and Sirsi. That's where my parents are from. Um, so I was an engineer. I was an electronics and communication engineer, and then I did my MBA. I was working in the IT for nine years before I quit uh, my job and then decided to pursue life in a different way. Uh, so it was not really running which got me out of IT, um, but something else. So it was more of, I want to explore what more I can do in life. That's what actually got me out of IT. And uh, I've been running for the past six years into ultras from 2018. So three years now since I've got into ultra running. Otherwise, I'm a very homely family person. I love 
uh, spending time with family. I have my uh, in-laws and my husband uh, whom I stay with. Um, so I'm not a very uh, mall-going, shopping kind of a girl uh, who spends more more time at home and with friends and pretty much outdoors. So anything related to nature or being outdoors and and maybe a little bit of suffering and <laughs> testing the limits, that's what I am. So here Lovely. we are. That's 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 beautiful yeah i mean i think uh, <clears throat> everything that you do uh, gives you joy they are very invaluable uh, you know aspects of one's life uh, relationships you know um, being at home so especially with the pandemic now all of us are realizing the value of it even more uh, the malls absolutely. are closed <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so, yeah yeah so, so i'm not so, i didn't miss anything when um, the lockdown happened or when you couldn't actually travel much so uh, the only thing that impacted due to the pandemic was that we couldn't get out as much as we wanted to even running was restricted but i think it was a good wake up call for all of us on priorities in life and what actually gives us happiness so yeah no no complaints or regrets about what has happened i think we always need to look forward instead of what has happened and what has actually brought us down so yeah well said well said so <clears throat> let's get back uh, you know you are today an ultra runner you're in the you're in the prime uh, limelight in terms of you know what you've done you know it's a it's an achievement for any runner to be able to uh, qualify for a world championship Uh, especially for an amateur runner i mean you know professionals uh, probably do that for a living but for someone to have quit a profession and come in and perform it's a great uh, feeling so let's get back you know into where it all started before we get to how you got here right so when did you and why did you get into running uh well at the onset i would like to uh, say this uh, on the records or i have always said this because i am surrounded with people who want to see uh, somebody do well so my husband or my in-laws or the friends i have and the running community itself has been so supportive that i've never really felt that oh i don't really i'm not a professional and why am i actually spending so much of time on running because my training also is in a day or in a week it's like 15 hours or 20 hours of uh, effort that you're putting in so um i'm very blessed and lucky to have people um who actually give me all the support that i need to pursue this passion of mine of running so going back to the question of why running how did it start so back in 2014 i think it was december is when um it was a 10 km event which was happening in um in whitefield and uh, the organizers had contacted uh, our company where i was working ibs software at that time um for um, participants from the company so our ceo called me into the office and uh, i was um, a bit into extra curricular as well other than the project management work that i used to do and he said i need you to put together a team of 30 people um provide them a bit of training because i was keen um about sports and uh, doing other things other than just the work um, related stuff so i used to host events in uh, in my company and uh, uh, things like that so that's how it began so it was 30 of us who signed up for a 10 km run and at that time it had i think it had been about Six years since I had completely stopped anything um, vaguely related to sport. So I used to be a very um, active child. Um, I'd played hockey in my school days as a state level prelims, and my dad was very supportive of my um, sporting uh, journey at that time. He he wanted me to get into something which will actually help me represent the country but then you know <laughs> coming from a very orthodox brahmin family after i got into engineering he just said okay this is enough now you need to focus on studies nothing more because you can't make a living out of this so uh, that's when the deviation happened and i got back into the normal um, life that they say you you study you do your engineering or whatever graduation and then you get into work settle down in life so this term of settling down that's what happened and that 10 km run so we had i think about two and a half months before we actually um, 
the event was scheduled and uh, so i had no idea about what preparation goes into running even a 10 km i just i was a um, middle distance runner in school so i used to do 1500 and uh, 5000 so uh, but that was also much a much lower competition level so it was not like i was very much uh, uh, trained for it so i just decided okay i'll buy new shoes um got out on the road did about two or three days of running every week uh, prepared even my team motivated them saying that it's okay you can run walk and just finish the 10 km because we didn't have a target as such it was not like you need to finish it in 75 minutes or 60 minutes anything it was just finish the 10 km so we did that that's when the the light bulb moment happened and i felt oh this is good i need to try more of it so um so my husband um, was there at that event and uh, since then the whole one year after he would accompany me for every single event that i signed up for and um, i must confess that i had gone bonkers at that time because every single event that was happening in bangalore i would just sign up and i would be there so if there is even i think i'd done about 13 or 12 uh, 14 events in the first year so pretty much one one 10 km event every month so that's how the trend was at that time and you know the social media craze also of posting that i did a 10 km with the medal with the timing and all that so it had caught up and i think i was also in that mode so that's how running happened nice first off field hockey um, i used to play field hockey and uh, i remember as uh, i used to be in, i used to be a center forward i don't know what position you played same here center forward center forward <laughs> yeah. and uh, we didn't have a great team so i used to be running all the the whole field because the defense was weak so you would go to the defense to <laughs> defend exactly. and then come back I to know. the forward <laughs> I totally uh, concur with what you're saying that's exactly the scenario which was in my school as well so you have to play all positions it's not like you're just there anywhere the ball is the center forward has to be there so <laughs> that was the whole thing. yeah so it, it, it used to running. involve yeah 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 that's how i think the background and also the base of running yeah. was already there yeah yeah totally nice it's always good to speak to somebody hockey. yes <laughs> <laughs> it's a dying sport so it's always good to speak to somebody I mean, who's playing sport it's the national sport but not many people know about it so when because we are on the topic uh, so when we played the state level prelims i remember we didn't even have the pads uh, for <laughs> protection because our school couldn't afford it and um, how much of pain we were in because we were just getting hit black and blue uh, and i came home and then my mother was my st- mother started crying because i would injure myself so much when playing you would fall here and there and she would be always worried that it's a girl you you're going to tan and how will we find a groom for you oh my god it was it was a nightmare but then my dad was always very supportive he just said just do whatever you like doing don't think about how your looks are going to be and all that you still have a lot of time to go so it's okay so he never treated me like a girl so he always used to say a girl also needs to do every single thing that a guy can do so he taught me how to ride a bike and uh, even peeling a coconut you know so the whole coconut so we are from the malnad region so he he had instilled that um courage and also this attitude that you can't say that because i'm a girl i can't do this so i think from the beginning even when i was a child that had come along so it was not it was not something that developed once i got into running so um i have my dad to thank for <laughs> all my madness now because that has something uh, which has been groomed from the childhood yeah that's that's very nice so thank you uh, to your dad for uh, giving that opportunity to you right so coming back to running uh, so 10k happened and you were like signing left right and center so it looks like the running bug had bit you and uh, <clears throat> so the first year you did all 10k's and then what happened uh, how did how did life progress in running 
So I did road events. So there were no trails in Bangalore at that time. So 2015, uh, there were trails, but obviously I was not uh, skilled enough to even think of anything longer. And that's when after about 15 events, I felt, oh, this is too monotonous road. You're just running on the road. And it used to be pretty much the same routes. Like you have five or six different routes in Bangalore and multiple events happening. So I started looking up on the internet as to if there is anything else outside Bangalore. So the closest one to Bangalore is Chennai. So that's when I heard about uh, the Ch- uh, Chennai Trekking Club organizing an event uh, on the trails called CTM. So Chennai Trail Marathon. So I decided, okay, if I want to upgrade the distance, because um, at least at the onset for the first three to four years of my running journey, I never had felt the need to push myself or challenge myself and see if there was a time when I could finish without much gas left in the tank. I would always finish with a lot of energy. And that's when I decided, oh, 10 kilometers is pretty easy. Why don't I try a higher distance? So that's when I moved to half marathon and I did the trail as my first half marathon distance. So I traveled solo to uh, Chennai and then I did the half marathon. And that felt exhilarating. I just love the feeling because um, you're on trails. You don't have a fixed uh, elevation. You don't know what's coming up next. And it was a totally different uh, and new route for me. So that's when I decided, okay, this is where my calling lies. That's when I felt, okay, this roads and uh, doing it in the cities is quite boring. And I need to actually explore more of these trail runs so indiarunning.com used to have this i I mean and they still do um, have the listing of these events which happen in india across cities so i started checking for trail running alone on those websites unfortunately we don't have much at even at that time it was only ctc which used to do uh, trail running events um, so i had to wait for about 2 years for other trail running events to come up and then when i could upgrade the distance so trail running is what actually got me into longer distance running yep makes sense so wasn't the kaveri uh, marathon happening those days wasn't that trail too Yes, yes, it used to happen, but I had checked that and at that point, it was very expensive. It used to be like uh, 2,500 rupees, I think, and I felt, oh, just for a 21 kilometer and you need to travel and you have all these expenses, it's too much. At that time, uh, I used to be a runner who, uh, who used to weigh out how much expenditure am I putting into this? Because I was still working at that time and um, how much time also goes into it. So if it's any outstation run and um, if I have to go, I'll have to probably uh, take my husband along because I didn't want to leave him and just travel on my own. Uh, So Kaveri used to happen, but I did that I think after one and a half years or so. So it's a beautiful trail. You run next to um, the canal. But uh, yeah, I didn't know it at that time. And also the logistics and all that was a little, yeah. I hope the Kaveri folks are listening to this and they'll think of a price discount for future <laughs> runners. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> um, I have to go, I have to tell you, compared to all the events which are organized, the aid station, so my husband and his friend, um, Fortunately, I was able to inspire them to uh, uh, sign up for um, the half marathon at Kaveri, prior to which they had done cycling for 100 kilometers. So it was uh, something they wanted to challenge themselves. So three months, we did some training together and I'd given them a plan and all that. So about three years ago, they did this. But they were so happy to see the kind of aid station supplies they had, so uh, which is unmatched. So mm-hmm. b- because I've done it before, I can definitely say Runners for Life, who are the organizers of Kaveri Trail Marathon, are one of the best organizers when it comes to pampering the runners. Uh, but having done longer distances after, I think being more self-sufficient works. Uh, but if you're an amateur runner, that's what ticks you. So that's what keeps you going. So yeah, it, it was a it was a fun event. 
Terrific. And and so switching from road to trails, uh, for most people, there's a lot of learning. Uh, you know, the trails are gnarly. There are roots. There are rocks. Uh, if you're not careful, you face palm. I have fallen on trails many times. I'm famous for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell us about your stories. What what were your transition challenges? But, you know, whenever we have a fall or something, it's more memorable than runs which go smooth on trails because you have stories to tell <laughs> as you're yeah. actually recalling. Uh, so because I'm from the Malnad region and we used to go to our grandparents' house uh, once a year or things like that. So at that time when I was younger, they never there were no toilets in our uh, native. So we actually had to go to the forest and finish the job in the morning and come back. So I was used to that kind of uneven surfaces and running around as kids. I mean, we never actually thought about it as trail or anything. It was just a job that you had to do. And then you would be running around with our cousins and all that in the forest. So when I shifted from road to trail, um, I felt it was more... Um, it required more focus and for you to be more in the moment because when you're on road, uh, I mean, now you can't say that because Bangalore roads are in such a state that they're pretty much like trails now (laughs) because with the potholes and all that. But when you're running on um, routes which are much more curated and uh, Mm -hmm. more smoother, you definitely have that awareness of where you're running, where you're placing your foot and how are you breathing, whether you're pacing yourself well. So it requires much more attention from your side rather than just making it or just to run. So uh, that's what actually um, helped me, helped me also uh, to develop my passion for running. So that's when I felt, oh, this is this is so much more because I've always been a person who looks for what more can I do in this. So even when I used to work, it was if it was some assigned work for me, I would definitely finish that off and then see how can I do it better the next time, or is there an efficient way of doing it, and how can I enjoy this um, monotonous work that I have to do. So even when it came to running, because the trails were offering that. I I felt that this is something that I can do for a longer duration. It was not like a very short stint that I just do a half marathon. And I mean, I have a lot of friends who got into running, who did a, one or two events, and then it just faded off because it was just something, uh, a bug which bit you and then you found a medicine for it and just <laughs> went away. Uh, so I think... Yeah, no. uh, if people actually do trail running rather than just roads, if you if you're an amateur, I'm sure more people will stick around for a longer duration. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, great tips there. One is you know the fact that you are constantly you know innovating or creating new ways of making keeping things interesting because you know all of us uh, we have a dopamine rush. We get into things. You know the dopamine goes away. And then we are like, hey, what what next? So that's that's a great great mindset. So for people to note down <laughs> as a, as a as a possible strategy to keep it going, and also with regards to trail, uh, the culture is different, right? Uh, road running is all about PRs, and everybody is competitive. And trail running is a little bit laid back. It's about enjoying nature. It's about supporting each other. So for you. Did that shift happen? Did you become, did you continue to be a performance oriented or did you kind of say, hey, you know, trails about enjoying trails. It's about community. Tell, talk to us a little bit about that. So um, although I wanted to do a lot more trails, we didn't have that much opportunities as such in the southern, uh, in South India. Uh, there were some trails happening in Himachal and Uttarakhand, but at that time, That was too much of a shift for me to uh, go on my own and uh, do those kind of runs. So I couldn't actually exercise my interest as much as I would have wanted to. Um, But as you said, I have always been someone who's been uh, Finnish oriented, if that is the term, (laughs) rather than um, uh, time or PR oriented. So I've never really looked at uh, timing as a scale to uh, check your progress. 
So even if I did a half marathon and I felt stronger than my previous run, that's what I would consider as a win rather than how much time did I finish it in. And um, if I could actually get someone along and somebody who's who's not doing okay on the uh, road, so even if it was road or trail, anywhere it is. So I don't know, that's a that's a trait that I would definitely want to continue as, as long as I continue running. Uh, it's not just about you running because it's it's the community itself um, yeah. because when you started when you know the struggles that you went through as as a beginner runner when somebody else is in that phase and if you can um, help them along just with mere uh, hey you're doing well and uh, come along we can just do a few kilometers together I think that gives a huge boost uh, much more than how much credit is actually given. Uh, so uh, I have had people who have come to me in uh, different events and told me that, hey, we did a run together two years ago and uh, we were str- I was struggling and we ran together for a few few meters even, even if it's half a kilometer. That is something that we remember. So I think that is much more important rather than just, uh, I'm not saying I don't chase targets or I have my own targets. It might not be time-based. It could be that I want to finish it stronger or um, with this much energy left or tomorrow after I finish the event, I want to go back and do my training of another 40 kilometers or maybe do this much of uh, cycling or whichever. So I have my own targets. But then um, I would definitely always try and uh, do much more than I thought I could in an event rather than just making it my own story. So, Yeah. And then that's clear even when you were sharing about what you did at work, even how this whole running started for you was because you had that uh, mindset, right? And uh, somebody, your, your, uh, your CEO asked you to manage an event because – you know, you were someone who took on more. So that's a great mindset. And, uh, you know, I'm noting that down as, uh, you know, something that we can all learn from. So coming back to your running journey itself, right? So you're now in 21Ks, you're doing 21Ks in trail, trial trails. Uh, then what? When did it jump up to the next level? When did endurance bug hit you? So um, as I said I didn't have a coach. I I never used to run with the team or uh, a running group because at that point, running was something uh, which was time for yourself and you just do it as a solitary act. So training or events, I used to go on my own. So after that Chennai half marathon, I started doing some uh, runs around Bangalore and um, in other states as well in southern India. So Kerala or things like that. So I had no idea of um, how much you can actually push yourself or this is what you can actually push yourself to. So I always used to run very conservatively and it used to be st- uh, first main uh, focus was to remain injury free. So I, that has been the bottom line of all my um, running and it was all the events that I've done uh, because I love running so much and it has given me so much in terms of uh, peace of mind or clarity um, of thought. So I always wanted to continue that irrespective of how an event goes. So when I did that half marathon for I think about six to eight months of multiple half marathons, I decided that, okay, it's time to try the higher distance and what comes after a half marathon it's a full marathon so again i went back to ctm to do my debut full and that's when my husband also came along and he did his debut half marathon at that event so we both debuted with a half and a full marathon so that's when uh, so because i had a lot of energy left and i used to be very conservative with in terms of pacing myself uh, I felt that I I still had a lot of energy left after I finished uh, an event. That's when mm-hmm. I felt, okay, why not try a higher distance rather than... So you have these uh, two different um, train of thoughts. So either you improve your timing in a distance that you're doing or you try and do a distance higher. So I felt this was a better strategy because I, I wanted to remain injury-free and I wanted to try mm-hmm. um, explore what more I can do. 
So half marathon uh, moved to a full. And after I did that full marathon is when I realized, oh, I still have a lot of energy left. <laughs> so that's when I heard about ultra marathon. So when I went for that event at Chennai, I heard from someone that, um, so there was a 50 kilometer uh, run, which was also a category at the CTM, at the Chennai Trail Marathon. But I didn't know it was termed as an ultra marathon. I had no clue until then. And that's when I started exploring what is an ultra marathon. So until three and a half years prior, I had no idea that there was this whole genre of uh, uh, running called ultra marathon itself. And the uh, the CTM itself, what kind of a course is it? Is it a very technical course or is it a... Um, well, not not, really technical. not technical at all. So it's pretty much running uh, in... Um, in villages around Chennai. So it's about 40 kilometers from uh, Chennai and uh, river buns. And then you have tried out lakes where you run and a bit of roads which don't have the tarmac left on them. So (laughs) I think that's only technical part of the trail there. But uh, when you're going from road, which is all smooth surfaces and then uh, aid stations exactly at two kilometers uh, catering to your needs, for my first full marathon is when I got my uh, uh, additional hydration and all that because I wanted to see how can I actually run longer uh, rather than just you depending on the aid stations there. So I think that first full marathon in the trail is what uh, helped me understand that you don't really need to completely depend on the aid station for your running. So until then, I used to be like, Every aid station that appears, you just go have your water or whichever, and then you go along. So, um, so it was like a metamorphosis from a caterpillar to a butterfly, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> now that so you did the the full marathon and you noticed the fifty k. So you signed up for the fifty k, I guess, right? And uh, was not it- at that event. Uh, I think about, uh, yeah, that's when I felt, okay, I need to do some structured training. I can't really go about and say, I'll just run two or three times a week. Because until then, that's all it was. Um, although I used to uh, do a bit of yoga and um, uh, things like that, but it was nothing compared to the kind of strength that's required to actually run a full marathon or distance uh, higher than that. Uh, so I September is when I did uh, the full marathon and February is when I signed up for a 50k. Unfortunately, by that time, uh, CTM was cancelled. So um, there were some issues with the club itself. So they were not conducting any more events. Uh, Prior to that, I had done a couple of Ironmans with the uh, Chennai Trekking Club. So I had attempted the Olympic distance and also the half iron distance. Um, Okay. So, I mean, uh, it was it was more like, okay, I can run. I used to cycle in school and I didn't know how to swim. Uh, so I learned how to swim. I signed up for uh, swimming classes, did that for about two months and then just jumped into the event and uh, gave it a shot. So, oh, nice. Uh, so, I have always so did, been someone who's who's um, ready to take on challenges. So it was it was um it was a dumb thing to do at <laughs> when i look back now because you don't know how to swim and you're signing up for an event and then you're signing up to learn to swim um so at that time i used to train with a group in bangalore for about 2 to 3 months i did that and my coach was just furious just <laughs> with the idea that i want to do a triathlon without even knowing how to swim um but I was like, oh, this is this is life. Come on. You can't always plan out everything. And sometimes you have to take some risks. And uh, this event that I had signed up for, the only saving grace was that it was in an open water. And there was a, a line which was in the center of the uh, open query. And uh, we had to do... Uh, I think 300 meters or something. So you could rest in between. You could just go on and hold that rope, 
take a breather and then continue. Uh, so that was the only saving grace there because I knew even if I can't swim for uh, 300 meters at a stretch, I can do like 25 or 50 meters, rest it and then go ahead. So sometimes... Um, uh, even if you're not technically completely skilled in an area, if you know how you can get around it and manage, I think that still works. <laughs> it worked for me at that time. No, that that is good because uh, swimming, I think personally, I personally think whether you do triathlon or not, knowing swimming is such a important skill in Absolutely. today's world. True. And uh, <clears throat> so it's it's good that you, you know, so late in your life, you were able to, uh, get into the water and learn and go to open water swimming because that's even more i swim but i am not yet i'm not uh, not too much of an open water swimmer right and uh, so it's it's a mindset jump so it's good that you 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 jumped that obstacle mentally and you did the triathlon so that's awesome and looks like the the triathlon team lost you uh, lost a potential ironman there because now you're kind of focused more on running <laughs> <laughs> well, after my half iron, I realized it's a very expensive sport and mm. uh, very time consuming. I mean, three different disciplines and um, I was moderately okay at each of them. But then I realized you need to be good at it. So you can't really uh, pursue something um, as demanding as Ironman without really being able to put in that kind of time or effort. So uh, cycling alone. So when I did my half iron, I had taken a rented cycle. So I went from here to Chennai on my own. I rented a cycle. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the cycle that I had actually ordered for and ended up riding an MTV for 90 kilometers and <laughs> on road so it was it was a great experience and a learning um, as to what you need to uh, prepare yourself for but then uh, cycle itself is uh, was costing so much and you need the gear and everything then I felt oh my god I have two legs I just need shoes I can run anywhere I want running is my thing so <laughs> That's how I just took a, but you never know. I mean, life is never a writing on the stone. So um, my husband gifted me a cycle uh, for my birthday this year. Uh, it's been a month now. So I might go back to triathlons if at all <laughs> that calling comes back. So you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So while all this was happening, were you still working or uh, was was that off track? So 2016 is when I quit my job. So Feb 2016 is when I quit. And uh, ultra running had not happened until 2018. So uh, one and a half years into my running journey is when I decided that I would want to quit my job and pursue something else. So at that time, running was not something that um, got me out, as I said. It was... Uh, so at at that uh, juncture, I was into photography and uh, I did that professionally for one year, um, did some CSR projects for a couple of companies and then food photography is what I had um, had found my interest because I'm a um, keen uh, foodie. I enjoy cooking much more than I eat. So I'm not a very picky eater. I can eat pretty much anything. And um, that's how it was. So the first year after I quit my job, it was all about photography. And then I realized, oh, it's again, I'm trying to go back to the same thing with deadlines and deliveries and things like that with uh, clients expectations. So uh, I did Hatha Yoga course after that. And then gradually uh, running took over. And um, uh, fortunately, I had some success in uh, running uh, from that year on. That's when I felt, okay, um, probably I need to uh, give it a little more thought and uh, pursue it a little more seriously than I have been. Uh, so 2016 to 18. So two years after I quit my job, uh, I explored a few options about what I want to do. And um, I was, I'm very blessed to have the support of my family who said, 
okay, go ahead. You are in a well-paying job in IT and you've worked for nine years. And uh, it was at a stage where, you know, it was a funny situation where I went and told my manager that I want to quit my job. So he looked at me. Uh, my husband and I had done a lot of biking across India. So we have a Royal Enfield motorbike and um I think we had done about one month of uh, rides across Ladakh and uh, other regions. So he looked at me and he said, "Oh, this is your uh, new fling, is it? <laughs> what's what's the new uh, what's new now?" So I said, "No, I'm serious. I want to quit my job and pursue photography." He said, um, okay, because I had given him, I think, about six months notice. I had the best manager. He was very understanding of whatever I want to do. And he knew I am someone who always uh, moves with something that is uh, keeping me interested. And he knew I can't be tied down. So he said, okay, six months, that's good. But um, give it a thought. Uh, don't uh, don't take any uh, rash decisions and then before i quit my job so i think in december so when we had two months left he said there's an opportunity in germany so i used to work for this uh, client lufthansa and uh, i'd worked in frankfurt for a few months and uh, so he said why don't you think about it give it a little more thought and he tried to persuade me to stay but then by then i had made up my mind and i wanted to see what more i can do wow so you are you know there is a story behind this runner there is photography there is cooking uh, you know there's not so much we know about that part of you that's amazing so um, love to get some pictures of your photography especially your food and hopefully we can share that with the viewers um Definitely. Why not? But I don't do that All anymore. Right. <laughs> but I do have some of what I used to do prior. So I, yeah. I definitely love to share them. Yeah, lovely, lovely. All right. So now life's moving forward. You've left your job. You've, you've done photography and that's not your calling anymore. So obviously now you're on, finally you're on track you know, uh, to to uh, he heading to your, you know, destination, if you will. So where were you on that journey in, in terms of running? Um, so when ultra running happened, when I did that 50 kilometer run um, in this hill station near Kard in Tamil Nadu, um, I told my husband... I think you will have to wait longer on all other events that I'm going to do here after. <laughs> because the first one year he used to accompany me, you know, it used to be 10 kilometer events. So 75 ish, so 60 to 75 ish kind of duration. Mm -hmm. So about one and a half hours is what he had to wait for, for me. He would at the finish line and he would just wait along. And when I graduated from the 10K to half marathon, um, I think second event itself, which was the Bangalore Marathon, uh, which I did the half marathon event, he'd come along. And then he said, I think after this, you need to go along on your own <laughs> because it used to be a lot of waiting time. So when I did that Aircard Ultra, so 50 kilometer run, I told him mm, either I have to do it on my own or you need to accompany me for longer durations. Find, get a book um, and uh, support me because it will be a longer duration because I was hooked. Um, running even 50 kilometer, I think the first 50 kilometer that I did was about six-ish hours. Six hours, I think, is what I'd taken at that time. So it's it's something that you can actually sleep for a good two to three hours, um, have some snacks, and then do a lot of reading. So he'd even come uh, two or three kilometers from the finish line to receive me at that time. I just felt that there was a different facet of me which I had not explored. Um, because that whole, uh, even if you're running with people, uh, about 50% of the time you're on your own. So you're on your own as in you're on your own with your own thoughts and a lot of things that are happening in your head. So that's when I realized, oh my God, longer distance running is really good. And um, I have to do more ultra distances rather than half or full. So since then, I think after I started doing 2018, so in three years, I had done just about seven or eight 
half and full distances i completely stopped doing 10 km events as such because it felt like just a warm up because when you're doing 50 km or longer distances 10 km events uh, didn't interest me or half marathons also didn't interest me as much so ultra marathon is my calling is uh, that realization happened to me in the 80 km malnad ultra which i did in 2018 so yeah and this was about the uh, same year as you did the air card 50k as well yes yes yeah and both air card and malnad must have been lot more technical right compared to the ctm uh, because malnad is yeah. also fairly hilly absolutely and, uh, yes it was and, it and was, how do you okay, go ahead yeah I'm sorry. So Erkard was a road run, so it was not a trail. Uh, but Malnad was was a mix of trail and road. So in in about 80 kilometers, we had about 30 kilometers of road which we had to cover. So you come out of a trail and cover about three to five kilometers, and then you head back into the trail, kind of a thing. But Malnad was um, an experience. I it was it was on our wedding anniversary that I had left my husband here and gone and did that run. So I wanted to dedicate that to my husband, and I had this goal that oh, um, so all of my friends were telling me you're leaving your husband on your wedding anniversary, and how are you just going away? But you know him being him he was much more understanding and he said i think if that makes you happy i think you should do that we can always spend time together we have a lifetime it's not just one day celebration so hey your husband puts a has setting a very high standard for all of us now okay <laughs> i've heard this from many people you know <laughs> <laughs> he's probably got to start a institution for how to be a good husband now <laughs> how to be a good husband to an ultra marathoner <laughs> Yes. No, yes. even otherwise, uh, yeah. As I said, I don't think I would have done any of this, even thought of doing any of this, if not for his support and uh, the encouragement that I've been getting. No, that's that's beautiful, and that's that's uh, uh, you know really that's uh, that's amazing. Yes, and I I completely agree. At, without the support of the family, it's uh, impossible to do these kind of uh, big projects uh, of any kind, and running for sure. because it it does take a toll on your body it takes a toll on your mind um so unless you have the alignment of the family uh, so yeah you you're definitely fortunate in that in that regard so terrific so so malnad happened so you're on now you're now a technically uh, ultra runner you you uh, you kind of uh, the bug has bit you and uh, then when did the 24 hour format come into your life um to be honest 24 hours came into my life um about 4 months ago <laughs> so oh, okay. i had done the stadium run prior to that so after i did my um ultra of the first ultra in 2018 the same year is when um, the organizer from nb sports uh, so nagraj adiga sir he was the one who actually got me into stadium running um So he said why don't you try the stadium runs and I was like sir it's so monotonous and I was in love with trails imagine coming from trails and running in circles in a 400 meter track that was my um, reaction the first time he told me that there's a stadium run coming up but he said it's okay it will be a good test of will it's much more than just the technicality of the trail or the route itself uh, it's a mental game and that that was what uh, said okay let me try it so i did my first 12 hour in the same year uh, july i think july 2018 i did the first 12 hour stadium run um and then so <laughs> now many of my friends won't agree that i i still say that i love the trails and definitely want to go back and do the trails because i have not done trails since the past one and a half years now vagaman um, which is a run which happens in kerala was my last one where i did um, no i think malnad yeah malnad ultra 110 is when i did my last trail but then i've been doing a lot more stadium runs uh, because i felt it was uh, helping me build my um, mental game for longer trail runs because when you're running in circles you know it it uh, transcends from being just a physical act to 
a totally mental game because i still tell people anybody who's done a full marathon distance if if you've run a 42 km on trail or on road you can definitely do a 12 hour duration so if it is on in a stadium i mean if it's trails maybe 10 hours even longer so you can do much more than you think that you can because when people when i tell that to people they always say oh i'm dead by the end of 42 i don't know how i i'm even going to do 10 minutes much more than what i did but we always hold back a lot of energy than what we always uh, what is seen so yeah i did that 12 hour and um, i think i did about three events after so 12 hour stadium runs at delhi and then chandigarh um so 2020 february is when i attempted my last 12 hour stadium and uh, fortunately uh, that event went well and um, it was a national best performance at that time so 112 kilometers is what i was able to cover at that event in the 12 hour uh, but then um, so corona happened and uh, the pandemic took over so we, there were no events after so this year when the events were coming back online and uh, things were happening i met nagraj ariga sir again and he asked me what distance i am planning to run at the bangalore stadium run which is scheduled so i told him 100 kilometers because um, i had heard that 12 hours there's no 12 hours anywhere in the world um, championship level so it was either 100 kilometers or 24 hours so i told him mm-hmm. sir i'm going to do 100 kilometers he was like i think you should do 24 because i had done 110 kilometers trail in malnad uh, which had taken me i think about 17 odd hours and um, he said okay why don't you do this target your 100 km just do that 100 km in whatever time you want to and then just finish the rest of the duration so you would look at it as 100 km and some running after so that's how he persuaded me to get into 24 and i felt that was pretty much a good uh, strategy also going into because there was uh, so we had the 24 hour world championship scheduled to happen in may and uh, that got moved but at in november 2020 we we had no idea that that was going to happen so i said okay if there is an opportunity to represent the country why not so so i had 3 months to prepare myself from my 100 km training into 24 hour training so i have been working with this place uh, called invictus performance lab for strength and conditioning so i went back the next day after my meeting with uh, nagrajari gasar saying that i think i'm going to try 24 hours now so they looked at me and they were like okay <laughs> we'd been training for about 2 months but they'd seen my madness because um i had attempted a 10 in 10 so there was an event which happened in bangalore um, end of october uh, where 10 days you run 10 marathons it was a timed event there was it was an official uh, thing so we had a 3 km loop and we had to run that 14 loops every single day and this this happened in this place called raja rajeshwari nagar which has quite a lot of elevation so it's rolling hills and rolling hills have always been an interest of mine because just flat route or just elevation i mean when you have rolling hills you can actually pace yourself in the way you want so either i run the hills up hills really hard and then recover in the downhills or vice versa so i had done that 10 by 10 and they had seen that okay this girl is not going to stop at whatever we say and they said okay go ahead tell us what you need to uh, uh, achieve that 24 hours what kind of support do you need from our side so i we started training for that 24 hours and um, i would definitely say more than the physical aspect of running 24 it was much more mental uh, game of training myself and putting myself out there and saying that okay i had done 12 before i knew what 12 hours in a stadium feels like but any any minute after that was new territory for me so i started reading a lot of books on mental training like endure by alex hutchinson or um, a lot of other great books out there um 
I know a lot of runners would say, oh, reading is so boring or self-help kind of books are. But uh, these kind of books come with experiences from their own journeys. So they really help me. And also the team that I'm working with, which works on sports psychology, uh, we did a lot of breathing uh, technique training and um, a little bit of uh, things on um, mental uh, game as well. So that really helped me to stay on course for 24 hours duration. Wow. So speak to us a little bit about that. So what exactly... What's your hack? How do you keep yourself? So one thing I'm hearing definitely in what you're describing is, you know, from trail to something like 24 hours is a shift in paradigm because one is about endurance. Another one is also about speed, right? Um, because it's this is not, so it is endurance, but at the same time, this is there's also speed involved because you're competing with people who are trying to run faster than you and cover faster. So you obviously are pushing. Um, so talk to us a little bit about what is your hack? What's your mental hack? How do you keep yourself focused and not lose it for 24 hours? So when I did that, uh, 12 hour stadium run, so my experience with 12 hour has been that, um, moments pass very quickly. But at that time, if you're suffering, if you're already, uh, in your head going into an event, if you're already thinking this is very hard and, mm. If your mindset itself is negative, Uh, you know, recently I was talking to a friend of mine who was going to run a trail, uh, which happened the previous weekend. And he said, I have very low chances of finishing, but I just want to go experience it. So that's when I told him that never go with a mindset itself, which says that, oh, I might not finish. Because when you're putting that fuel into your head, when you're beginning an endure, there is definitely a high chances of you not finishing because you're already telling your mind that I can't do this. So, uh, so that 12 hour stadium runs with my experience, what I had learned was don't dwell on a particular moment for too long. Uh, So even if you're feeling good, that moment will pass. Even if you're feeling bad, that moment also shall pass. So the, the strategy that I follow is quite simple. So I try and have number of laps as a gauge. So even if I'm feeling a little low, maybe something is aching or your mind is telling you to stop or things like that. I tell myself, let me just do five laps, not long, just five, just get done with five. So it's about two kilometers. So you do two kilometers and then you see how it goes. Don't think too much ahead. So when we think too much ahead, then your mind says, oh, this is too long. I can't do this. And uh, it'll come up with a lot of excuses to uh, not let you uh, do what you can, actually. So that was my thing with 12 hours. And with 24, I had told myself, it's 12 hours. I want to run for 12 hours. So do my best for that duration. And then it's about how I can sustain for 12 more. So that was that was all I had in my mind when I went into it. So the first 12 hours went pretty okay for me even when I was running. And after that, you know, when you're running in such a small loop, you can see every single person who's running. So you are uh, very much influenced by the whole scenario. So if people are walking ahead of you in the same lane, even if you're feeling good, it's quite hard to push yourself and continue running unlike trails or on the on a point to point course where you're just on your own and you do your thing so here um i look at it as a, a double edged sword because you can actually draw a lot of inspiration from someone who is trying to push themselves and challenge their own boundaries and also it can uh, make you feel that oh everyone is doing this everyone is walking everyone is telling that it's hot probably it is and I need to take it easy Uh, so but that event um, I had spoken to quite a few uh, runners from Bangalore and even outside who had done 24-hour formats before so Manoj Bhatt was one of them who's an ultra legend from Bangalore who's been running for more than I think 15 years and uh, he told me don't think about it as a challenge for the whole duration. 
just break it down into smaller chunks take it maybe 30 minutes at a time and um, it'll pass by so fortunately it worked for me on that day and i i had the support of my friends who came along i think i had four of my friends who came to crew me and my husband crewed me for 12 hours so when i saw them each and every lap being there asking me do you want something or you're really doing well and cheering me on and there were so many others who were cheering me and i think the final two hours um every single lap i heard somebody call out my name and say you're doing really well and you can do this so that fueled me along and it didn't feel like an ardent task to actually get done with so my first debut as such with 24 was was a great learning and um, i felt that you can actually do much more so i am raving to actually go ahead and see what more i can do in the 24 hour format wow and you know you are also competitive in the sense that you you've been doing well you you were you finished fourth uh, you know the recent one that uh, completed in bangalore and so when it comes to performance right so so i get that so first of all great hack so great mindset this is great for life in general i suppose uh, you know taking living in the moment breaking it up uh, so you can do big things uh, great analogy metaphor to take both ways uh, in athletics and in in life but performance is a different ball game and so if you're going to be running for 24 hours and how are you managing your uh, performance goals yeah. I mean, so um the first the debut 24 hours which i did was more about how i think i could run it rather than what was possible so i knew 20 12 hours is something that i have done and i knew what pace i could run it in so i had made a pacing plan for the first 12 hours saying that every hour i have to cover this many laps so you have this thing where they announce after about an hour how much uh, is your mileage so i would keep a track of that and my own target of how much so it was an hourly target that i had for myself saying that these many laps which is this many kilometers that you need to cover so and after 12 hours it was more about keep moving don't take any breaks so the least amount of breaks that you can take and the uh, lesser amount of time you spend off track is how much mileage you can you're going to get in the bank so after that 12 hour period definitely your body is tired and i think more than the physical aspect it's the mental thing saying that oh this is all new territory and i don't know how my body is going to respond so i'm going to be very much more conservative than i would if i had the experience so probably i would say if you're going into an event with experience from a previous um, attempt then it's much easier for you to convince your mind so when i did that pacing plan and when i look back at my pacing plan and how it went on the event day there definitely were things that didn't match up to what i wanted to uh, actually do but then um, that's how it is on that particular day but when i'm trying to improve on my performance and when i'm trying to look at uh, what is possible and if i'm representing the country i definitely want to do the best i can so that time i surely will have i'm um, i'm planning to come back, come up with uh, strategies to keep me on pace even after that 12 hours so i think in a 24 hour format the final 12 hours is what matters much more than the first 12 because first 12 you're more energetic and you're able to do what you plan to and the target can be taken off course with the final uh, second half of it so yeah makes sense no that very clear very clear and yeah. thanks thanks for sharing that i mean for all for most of us it's a new world and so it's uh, somebody like you is doing it is where we can get to hear and learn about it so thanks well it was a new world uh, even for me when i got in so i'm just two months old in it but a uh, lot of learnings so i have seen others who've done it before and i'm i'm also trying to learn from their own their experiences and putting in my own um trial and error method because you know in ultra running it's all about trial and error especially with nutrition and what works and what doesn't so 
some days it does some days it doesn't because after that you know i attempted another 24 hours at chandigarh uh, which didn't go as per plan and um, i took a call to uh, quit after 70 kilometers so mm-hmm. certain days everything is smooth and things are going as per how it should but certain days it doesn't but i think that's the whole beauty of running itself or any sport itself yep yep and that's a journey you are in right now and we do wish you um the very best for the coming competition and uh, i hope it does happen and uh and and you shine and push push your limits and go get get that medal <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much i'll definitely do my best terrific so uh we kind of coming to the end of our conversation it was a very fascinating enriching and um, you know i learned a lot and i'm sure the viewers who are listening to this are taking away um uh, you know a lot of uh, learnings and wisdom from your own experience and um so coming to the last part of our conversation i have a rapid fire round uh related to running okay so <laughs> for, well it's more fun fun question so let's let's get into that you ready for that sure rapid fire i didn't expect this okay but i'm <laughs> up for a challenge always it's it's not as rapid as you would see in karan johar show but <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit more less less <laughs> rapid as those <laughs> okay ready yeah sure so what's what's the what's your most used cuss word like a bad word um you know my husband keeps telling me because i'm from the malnad region we don't cuss at all the maximum that i would say is oh my god or in kannada if i have to say which is the language that i speak i'd be like bari kettadaitu that's all so <laughs> i am not someone who uses a lot of it and uh, i think it's more internal than which comes out so <laughs> So not many Sorry questions. to disappoint you on the first uh, question itself but yeah <laughs> that's no that's problem. what it is So uh tell us a sports person who inspires you the most Uh Pulela Gopichand So I've read his um, um biography and I think about 4 5 years ago and the hard work that he had put in to uh, get into the team and represent the country and this is just amazing and i have been fortunate to meet him a couple of times although couldn't uh, spend as much time as i wanted to speak to him about but he's been someone who's inspired me to keep doing uh, what you want to do but still keep doing it with discipline nice nice what are you most afraid of i am most afraid of you know my dad used to tell me that uh, you should never be afraid of anything and at night my hu- my younger brother used to be afraid of going out in dark so ghosts and things like that but i have always been someone who wanted to very curious so i would always go out and try and see if there is anything at all and say oh there's nothing but coming back to the serious question i am afraid of um, hallucinations you know i had one hallucination at the 80 km malnad ultra that i did where i uh, imagine seeing a person sitting on the side of the trail and i wanted to ask him the time and of uh, about half a kilometer be- uh, from the point where i saw that person i kept th- uh, visualizing a lot of things and thought what i should ask him and things like that and i reached that point and there is nobody so i think from there to the from the trail head to the uh, road it was about 3 kilometers i ran like crazy i don't think i've run, ever done even an interval run at that pace <laughs> and i reached the road because it was dark and so i think i am still very afraid of hallucinations and um, the whole uh, scenario of what goes on in your head without you being able to control it mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. very nice that's nice nice uh... Do you have or would you ha- get a tattoo? I do have a tattoo. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I have a tattoo about my uh, the name that I have for my husband. 
So, yeah. Okay. Okay. One unhealthy habit. I know you're a healthy person. You're a sports person. You're an ultra athlete. But all of us have something that we do <laughs> that is that is guilty pleasure, unhealthy. What is that for you? Um, it can't be really food because, yeah, as you said, I have always been very healthy in terms of food habits much before I became a runner. So that's been something that's been a lifestyle for us. So uh, my father-in-law keeps teasing me that even the papad, we roast it rather than frying it. So <laughs> we belong to that kind of community. But unhealthy, I would say, if there is something that I would uh, want to change, it's about my sleeping habits. I've always been a nocturnal person. Uh, which is very surprising for people because I'm a runner and you get up and do your long runs early in the morning. So if there is something that I have to do, I'm always up for it. So even if it is lesser amount of sleep during the night, I do it. But then I can sleep for 24 hours straight. There have been times where I've slept for even 16, 18 hours and just woke up to eat and then go back to sleep again. So that's something that... uh, I mean, doctors would say sleeping more is better and it's healthy, but I don't think uh, 16 or 18 hours is good. So it's an unhealthy habit that I have. All right. Good. You you know, you did well in the rapid fire round. Uh, We (laughs) got to know uh, some, you know, nice aspects of you. So, hey, uh, Ashwini, thanks a lot for taking your time and joining me in this conversation. Um, Kind of wrapping up here, I'd like to give you the last word. Is there anything you want to say, any message you want to give to our viewers before we wrap up? Um, First of all, I've never met you, Santosh, but uh, it's been lovely interacting with you and uh, even uh, off the podcast, the conversations that we had and uh, how much caring you are about um, others. That was very much visible to me in in the mail um, exchanges that we had. So I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to interact with you. Thank you for this um, this time on your show for, uh, I think it's uh, almost about 90 minutes now. So thank you so much. As a message to anybody who's listening, all I would say is it need not be running. It can be any sport or anything that actually uh, moves you and interests you. But a healthy lifestyle is definitely better than um, being a couch potato. So even if you feel that you can't even walk, get out and do that 10 minutes or 15 minutes a day and uh, I'm sure that will help keep the wheels moving and you will have a better life after that. Superb. All right, Ashwini, I'll let you go. Uh, Have a wonderful day and it's end of the day for me. I'm on the other side of the uh, planet. Yes, I know. Uh, So I'll (laughs) let you go and we shall be in touch. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you so much, Santosh. Nice talking to you.